Peppermint, what is it? How does it work? And how do you deploy it? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. So Peppermint from a high level view is an open source ticketing system, right? If you've ever used these, if you ever worked in any sort of field that requires you to log tickets, that's what this does. And it does it really simple and straightforward. You can create tickets, you can see the tickets that you have, you can assign them, leave notes and all of that good stuff. But that's what Peppermint is at a high level, but it's actually a great source of truth for documents. It's also rather than just tickets, you can look at this as more of a way to track your tasks as well. If you're a self hoster, you always have stuff going on and you've always tracking sort of stuff. So just because you see this as a ticketing system, this is also has a great use case for using it just in terms of your home labs and stuff like that as well. So what I'm going to do is let me show you around Peppermint. We'll get a feel for how it all works and the features that it has. And then I'll walk you through the deployment of Peppermint as well. So this here is the dashboard of Peppermint. So as you can see, we can see the issues that we have open, any completed issues and any unassigned issues. So an issue is a ticket, okay? It's just an easy way to remember that. And if you're wanting to, you, we can click into the ticket that we can see here. And we, I've just made like a little example one. Uh, so look into docket slowness of the uh, sandbox server. The, uh, the title there was a bit cut off, but you just scroll over and you can see it. And then you've got the description. So if you ever need to write a little log, and then if you've got multiple people that can log in, yes, Peppermint supports multiple users and different authentication types. You can log in here. And if someone was working on it, you can leave some comments. So maybe if you are running your own sort of business, right? Maybe you're creating websites for someone. This can be that as well. If, if you're tracking work for someone or if someone needs you to do a certain task, this also works really well. It's not just for like, support services and stuff like that this can be used for your in-house tracking needs as well so it has all the features so let's go and make a new one so let me just walk you through this so you can give this a title so i'm just going to do youtube example for the title we can also put a name and an email here if we want to uh we, i can leave that blank but we can put in here so this is an example of a issue for youtube video and then if you would, again, if this was for a business use case, you could have some sort of clients. If you're just using this for like internal self-hosting stuff, click internal, right? We can select an engineer. If Again, if you've got multiple people in your team or if it's just you, then you can just use your standard user or if you've got others, you can assign it to them like that. And then you've got the type of issue it is. So is it an incident, a service, a feature? So service could be good if it was like, hey, look, this person was requesting um, a change to their website. I'm going to do that for them. It's just a service I've requested. Just like that, right? Or is it just general maintenance that you need to do for someone? Um, or for your own stuff so you can keep track like, hey, look, I need to update my servers. You can do all of that here. I'm just going to make this one. Let's make this one a feature. Why not? And we'll create the ticket. And now we can see that we have two. We've got one here, which is a bug and it's open. And then we also have one that's a feature. We click into it, we can see just like that. But that's essentially it. That's how simple it is to create and log and track tickets within Peppermint. Then we have the documents. And this is what's quite cool is that this can become a document server as well. So when you're doing stuff within your uh, home lab or within your business or whatever, and you're needing to create docs for certain uh, maybe processes for how you handle things, how do you create a bug? How do you log uh, certain other tasks within your business or just in your home lab? You know, what? how do I do my monthly updates? How? What, what files do I need to remember to clean up on my servers and stuff like that? You can have this all here. You can create a new document and then you can just, you know, I can say, hey, look, this is my monthly cleanup. And then you can come down here. If you hit forward slash, you've got all of these options. You can have videos. If you've got, maybe you want to link to some YouTube videos that you're using for reference, you can do that here. And then I could be like, all right, so for server one, and then I can just break down what the process is for that. And there we go. If I click back on documents, we can see now there's that monthly cleanup and I can, you know, search for it like that. And now we can manage it. And yeah, so having those documents here is just having it in one place is great. And again, it's not over complicated. It's not busy. It's just issues documents, right? And here, if we click on issues, we just get another breakdown. So we get the issues overview, but then we can click on open and then closed. So if I click on one of these and let's click on this one, I can click close issue here. And there we go. This issue is now closed. And if I come back to issues, we can see it's been marked as closed. So we know it's done. And you can also see these like letters on the side here. So this is actually hot uh, shortcuts. So if I hit C, this creates a new issue. If I hit H, we're on the home screen, right? 
documents for D, T, O, F is actually quite cool. And then A for admin. And that's where we're going to next. So admin, uh, if you're aware, like we, this is where we can create users and manage our users. You've also got permissions. So if we go into role, we've got admin users or just the general users. If you're an admin user, then of course you get access to the admin panel here. Then we've got clients. So this is, remember, where we can create our clients. If we are working for them, this is where we can manage them. And what's really cool here is that you actually have some URLs you can give your customers if you want. Now, if a new customer is going to register on your platform, you can give them this link or you can fill it out, portal register, right? And now you, this is where you can create them an account. And you can see here, this is just for external users only. And if we go back and if they go to the portal URL, if they are part of the customer that's assigned, they can see the tickets that they have open. And if they need to create a ticket, they can also create a ticket as well. So this is where they can come and interact if, if that's what you want anyways. And then you've got the guest ticket URL. If they need to create a ticket, you can just send them this. This could be on your website or something. I've just zoomed in a bit. But here you go. They can enter their name, their email, what the issue is. And what priority they think it is the, the description and then they can submit the ticket so let's try this so let's just go hey this is tech docs test at test.com help i broke my laptop that is pretty sad that's an incident it's a pretty high priority um i'm sad it broke <laughs> so then we can hit submit ticket and they can see that they've, it's been submitted right and if we go back to our peppermint and go back we can see now we have help my laptop broke coming back to the admin so again we had our clients list here we've got email queues which is awesome so what could what you could have here is let's say you could have a email address like i could have um support at techdocs.nz right and if someone emails that that logs a ticket and you that's how you can set this up here you could have web hooks here so let's say if you had like notify or something set up uh, if, if a ticket came in that would send a web hook alert out and you'd be like oh i've got a new ticket i need to go check on that right and this also of course supports smtp emails so if you want to set this up you can and then there's also authentication so again it's quite new they've got oidc support but I can't see OWF or SAML here. Uh, it looks like they might both be coming soon, but they'll be great to be able to plug in your identity providers as well. We've got some roles here, so we can actually um, set up roles for our users. So what they, what can they do? And it's quite defined, right? Maybe I'm just gonna have some read-only users, so I'm just gonna create read roles, right? So you could do that here, and then you could just call that a read-only role, and then you could assign that to the people you want. And then you also just have a nice set of logs as well, so you can see what your peppermint service is up to and then lastly of course you got the nice theme so if you want to change the colors you can um you've got the dark themes which is always nice uh, you've got forest um solarized light all of that stuff so um it's quite nice to have these different colors as well so that there is peppermint okay uh so what we'll do now is i'll show you how you can get this all set up with docker and we'll go through the process of deploying it trust me it is so straightforward it's crazy we deploy it and then we're good to go so this is their official documentation right and it's really straightforward all you've got to do is grab their docker compose run it deploy it and you have your service up and running so let me walk you through that process we'll have a quick look at the docker compose and then it will all be deployed so of course we're going to need a server where we're going to be deploying this so let's jump to the server that we'll be using in this video right so i'm connected to my server here this is just my electron cloud server and as always i always have a folder called docker and within there I have all of the services that are running on the server, like that's where the uh, composers. If you're using something like Portainer, feel free to deploy through there as well. So what I've got is I have a folder. If I change into it, it's called Peppermint. And if I do an LS, it's nice and empty. So what we're going to do is do a nano docker hyphen compose dot yaml and hit enter. And now all we need to do is paste in that compose file from uh, Peppermint's documentation into here. So if I just copy this, we don't actually need the version that's uh, outdated now. So we just need the services part and we paste. And now let's have a quick read through. So we're going to be deploying a Postgres database, right? And that's what Peppermint's going to use, of course. And it's going to use a volume called PG data. That's no problem. Uh, you can see it's got some environment variables here. It's going to create a database user called Peppermint. And that user is going to have a password of one, two, three, four. Make sure to change this, but for the sake of this uh, testing and for the video, I'm just gonna leave everything as default. And then we've got the actual Peppermint deployment itself. 
the container name is going to be called peppermint it's using the latest image and it's going to run on some certain ports here 3000 and 5003 now 3000 is used on mine um, so i'm going to change this to like 3080 uh, don't change this ports on this side just change them on this side if you need to, if you've got a bit of conflicts. Otherwise, just leave them as default. And this is the port here, the 3000 one, is what we're going to use to connect to the Peppermint once it's deployed. And then we've got the environment variables. So if you did change the database password above, which you should have, just make sure it matches down here. You don't need to change the database host. You can change the secret if needed. And we can save this and close. And now we've done that, we can do a simple docker compose hyphen d and hit enter and i already have the image deployed so that's why you didn't see that but it's deployed the container and if i list out my compose we can see hey look we're going to connect to this on 3080 so the server that's running this we're going to connect to its ip address on port 3080 so i redeployed this so rather than 3070 i'm going to change that to 3080 and hit enter and now this is a fresh deployment and the default password which is also on here is just admin at admin.com and the password's 1234. So we'll paste that in, 1234, and hit enter. And we can see here that it's just giving you some um, ways to check out the documentation or get in touch with the community. But you just hit to dashboard here. And there we go. We're ready to get started and everything I showed you, you can now go ahead and start using. And again, if you want to have like a proper domain name, I have a video for that. So you can set up a proper HTTPS for your internal stuff as well. Um, but yeah, so that's Peppermint. Really straightforward. I love it when open source products just do what they say they're going to do and they don't fill it in with a whole bunch of bloat stuff. But yeah, it's really cool. Uh, all the links will be in the description. Check it out. Uh, thank you so much to all the members as well. Uh, I really appreciate your support. Uh, I've been a bit busy lately, hence the kind of video has been a bit delayed. Normally I was posting every week. It seems a bit like once a month now, but um, if you're keen to have conversations and still see what I'm up to and what the rest of the community is up to, we're in the Discord. A link to that will also be in the description. If you're keen to have a chat, come join us and say hi. But that's the video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.